for those of you who are scared to kind of get out there with your own intellectual property or to uh, feeling like you need to wait until you're more expert to view yourself as a leader in your industry, I'm telling you, don't put it in reverse order. Part of creating and becoming your future self is believing in her right now and showing up and acting as if you already are her and taking action, feeling the discomfort and fear that comes up and watching you bridge that gap between future you and current you. Welcome to Sincerely Future You, a podcast that helps ambitious women like you make decisions today with the future you in mind. Hi, Habsters. Have you missed having a Habster of the Week? I have missed having a Habster of the Week. I kind of stopped doing it because I was on maternity leave and I was celebrating just behind the scenes and I am missing it. I'm missing this segment. And so as I was preparing episodes for you, I was thinking, who do I want to make the Hapster of the Week? And I haven't had one in so long that I started to just take notes and I was feverishly typing people's names and just ideas. And it turned into this love fest on all of the amazing things that I have not updated you guys on in what my clients are up to and what they're doing. And so I figured instead of just choosing one hapster of the week, I would turn this into an entire episode called, I don't know what we're going to call it yet. Maybe hapsters crushing it. <laughs> We'll call it something better than that. But essentially, I am going to just give you a rundown of what my current clients and a, a couple of past clients as well, who are just, I have some notable shout outs for, are up to. And there's so many different ways that I like to celebrate. Of course, you know, I coach on time and money and CEO drama. So we're going to celebrate uh, clients who are hitting milestones and or growing in one of those three areas. And I'll give you some context and it'll help those of you who aren't yet hapsters, but you want to be, you're preparing to be in the next round of happening sessions. Um, it'll help you give some context to what we do in the room, what we're working on, what type of things that come up for people and that people notoriously or historically struggle with and then come into the room and we work out in a matter of sometimes just a few weeks. So let's kick it off shouting out Brianna. Brianna is a florist in Happening Sessions, and you can actually check out her beautiful work on Instagram at Wildflower Touch. Um, she is tracking towards her impossible goal right now. She is learning how to revenue track in a way that makes her feel uncomfortable. Okay, so a lot of you guys, before you start working with me, uh, you, well, some of you don't track at all your numbers. So we clean that up right away. But more often than not, you guys have a process for tracking, but it might be a way that makes you feel good and helps you validate. So you'll know who I'm talking about. If you're listening to this and you're the type of person that likes to look at the numbers that help you just feel good and you want to avoid looking at numbers that help you feel, or not help you feel, but that cause you to feel uncomfortable because they bring up some thoughts about not being far enough along, et cetera, et cetera. So I recommended that Brianna track both, that she starts to track her revenue in terms of receivables because as a florist, she has a lot of revenue that comes in but that she doesn't um, actually pay herself out on until the event, right? Like namely weddings or uh, events that she is booking in advance that have expenses that are down the road. So I said you should track in receivables and also in cash collected. So one of those numbers sometimes makes her feel really good because in the summer, she is going to love tracking her cash collected number because that is a really busy season. Whereas in other months, she might prefer to track her receivable 
amount because she's booking for future um, seasonal events, but not uh, not actually making all of that money. She's just getting contracts and getting deposits, but not collecting on all of that money in that month. And I wanted her to practice getting neutral about those numbers, which is so big. So shout out to Brianna, who's getting really uncomfortable getting neutral with her numbers. Then I want to shout out Brittany. Brittany is a CEO who came to me having already done a million dollar revenue a year with her business. She sells headbands of which I am a super fangirl. I own lots of headbands. In fact, my daughter Mari also owns lots of headbands. We have a little mommy and me collection going over there. So check her out on Instagram at busy B crafts. That's B I Z Z Y B the letter B crafts. And she is preparing for maternity leave. And as you guys know, I did this in a masterful way myself this past year. And so we are working through that process with her and And she just hired an employee in her masterful plan to set her up for her maternity leave to run her business without her in January. And in the process, I will say too, for those of you who are listening or like, oh my gosh, that sounds great. Like it just must feel so awesome. I know that Brittany is feeling all of the emotions right now because I did too. The process of setting it up is going to stretch you. It feels so uncomfortable. It feels a little bit messy because you're training. You don't really know what you don't know, right? Because you she's never taken a step away from the business in this way before. And I'm so proud of her for connecting to that future self and deciding that it is just going to be amazing and then reverse engineering that result by planning in advance for it right now. You're rocking it, Brittany. Okay. Next, I want to shout out Marnie. Marnie is a shell and mural artist. You can check her at at Art by Marnie B on Instagram. She is beginning to master scheduling as well as creating policy after policy as she learns what projects are worth her time and which aren't. Those of you who are listening that you are an artist or have an art based business, you might in the beginning take on anything and everything that people ask you to do. And that's okay in the beginning, right? As we're scaling to 100K, you just want to kind of make money. The process of making money is going to teach you so much. And then as you start to get closer to that 100K, that's when we start to get more masterful and we start to help you be really clear and ask high quality questions about what's worth worth your time and what's not. She recently shared a win that instead of saying no directly and thinking so black and white about opportunities, she asked herself the high quality question, what would this be worth to me to charge? She offered that price that felt good to her and the client accepted. That is being a masterful CEO. Way to go, Marnie. Okay. Next is Ashley. Ashley Hoff, that name might sound familiar to you listeners because as you know, a few episodes ago, we did a two-part episode with her as Ashley has just come off and has been celebrating the release of the healing docu-series that she executive produced called 11 Minutes. 11 Minutes, uh, I you have to go and just listen to the two-part episode. It really is such an important series to be out there about America's historically largest mass shooting in our history. And Ashley is not only a survivor, but also the executive producer of this docuseries. You can view the docuseries on Paramount+. Plus. But Ashley, in the aftermath of this coming out, in the year that we worked together and coached through things both business and personal, Ashley has been doing something that we call making milestone decisions. That means making decisions, sometimes when you're in the thick of some negative emotions, especially if it has anything to do with trauma, um, or let's say you're just in a major, major transition, whether you're grieving or you're on maternity leave, or, you know, you're just getting out of a relationship or just welcoming a child, right? Anything like that, that a big life event, sometimes we're not really certain about a lot of decisions that we want to make. 
But how we can handle that is to make milestone decisions. I actually also have a podcast on this that you can listen to called Milestone Decisions. So look at that. But she was doing that a lot saying, I'm going to make the decision to decide about that. And a lot of the milestone deadlines that she set for making those decisions were in October of this year. And lo and behold, this October, I watched Ashley turn into a whole new version of her. In fact, I watched her turn into future Ashley. She just took a amazing trip that she gifted to herself to London and Paris. And she is really flourishing in ways that I can only credit her for being willing to do the hard work of processing negative emotion this year and being willing to open yourself up to thinking about your future, even when it's painful. I'm so proud of you, Ashley. Okay. Next, I want to shout out Jen. Jen is actually an, a former hopster and she, I just noticed right before this episode, so I needed to include her in here, that she is getting out of her comfort zone majorly. One of the things that would come up for us all the time was her relationship with technology and Instagram. And she just previously believed that she sucked at certain things and learning new tools. And you need to go check out her reels at Jennifer Evans events on Instagram because her luxury brand of uh, event planning blows my mind. And now she's doing reels to start to really, really showcase herself. Not that I think that reels are an essential part of any business, but it is important to start stretching yourself in new ways and developing new skills. That is a part of being a masterful CEO. Rock on Jen. Okay. Next is Sarah. Sarah is at brandcake.biz on Instagram. She is a business coach as well. And she just led a local in-person women in business event in Austin. This happened last night as the night that I'm recording this and leading up to the week of the event. She's got so many things that she's launching right now. Go check her out. She teaches women how to um, invest and how to manage their money as well. Uh, But she taught her own intellectual property at this event. And leading up to it, I asked her the question of, okay, like what is the goal and where does this event fit in, in terms of hitting your goal? And she was, had decided that in terms of the number of clients that she wants to book, that one of the things that she wanted to do from this event was to create a and build her wait list for her for her money mastery program. And she wanted to book a certain number of consults and then just sent me an image last night of her wait list that was overflowing with people specifically requesting and checking which program they wanted to to learn more about and to be a part of. So for those of you who are scared to kind of get out there with your own intellectual property or to uh, feeling like you need to wait until you're more expert to view yourself as a leader in your industry, I'm telling you, don't put it in reverse order. Part of creating and becoming your future self is believing in her right now and showing up and acting as if you already are her and taking action, feeling the discomfort and fear that comes up and watching you bridge that gap between future you and current you. And Sarah has been doing that. Just what my friend Olivia calls gag and go. She's just been feeling the discomfort and doing it anyway. So I'm so proud of you, Sarah. Next is Grace. Grace is an executive producer as well. She's also in the TV space and she just negotiated a new contract in a way that felt powerful rather than defensive. As women, I know so many of you guys listening to this can relate to this. She's a woman of color in the Hollywood industry and she's collected a lot of thoughts and that are circulating that are not just her thoughts, but kind of like 
the thought, the group think of the industry. She's collected a lot of thoughts about being undervalued in comparison to her male counterparts. And now she's navigating how she wants to define herself as a leader, as a visionary, and as a producer. And it's been incredible to be a part of her journey and to watch her in real time, especially these last few months, come up against what previously would have been a conflict that would set her back you know, in so much time and so much drama and quickly get to neutral. She just said to me, I used to work around the clock to prove my worth. And this week I made time to work out. I kept our coaching calls a priority and I clocked out by six. I never do that. Such a win. I'm so proud of you, Grace. I don't think we can put a price on having working our boundaries. For those of you guys who don't have that, I promise you it's possible. Even if you believe in your industry, it's not possible. Trust me, Grace works in one of those where most of her coworkers and most of her peers are not setting boundaries and she's doing it for herself. Way to go, Grace. Next is Jean Marie. Jean Marie is a new client. You can check her out at Shore to Shore Cleaning or at Let's Talk Dirt underscore why let's talk dirty. She runs a cleaning company on Long Island, a very successful one. I do want to add, and she's just the giver of all givers. That is a principle. Uh, giving is a principle of money management that we back up and we talk about a lot in happening sessions because I don't think of it as a separate thing from earning and spending and saving. You know, it's all a part of money mastery. And last night I went to a local uh, Babes and Business networking event and Jean Marie actually sponsored the entire event. And instead of focusing on the time that she had to speak on, hey, come and hire me as a cleaning service, which she very well could have done. She spent the time talking about her charity and giving back and her personal story of, you know, being homeless and actually creating a business that's a multiple six figures of revenue now from $50 in her car, living out of her car with uh, just a bucket of supplies from Home Depot. She inspires me so much because she's not just all talk. She doesn't give for the sake of receiving. She understands that giving is receiving. And it was so emotional last night to witness her. And I can't wait to have her as a guest on the podcast so you can learn more about giving and how she incorporates in it into her business in a masterful way. So proud of you, Jean Marie. Next is Denise. This month, Denise recognized her comfort zone. So many people I watch, their biggest problem with growth is that they're just not aware of what their comfort zone is. They busy themselves up, and so many of us are taking safe action all of the time. And then we call this working hard, and then we're kind of confused as to why we're not making progress or we're frustrated as to why we're not making progress. Denise recognized this month that she was mastering scheduling, exactly that scheduling, but scheduling the safe action. This awareness has her scheduling out the discomfort this month, namely setting dates for her clarity circle, which we're holding her accountable to. This is the kind of awareness that saves clients months and sometimes years that they would otherwise be buffering with busy work. So proud of you, Denise. Next is Erica. Erica just wrote in our portal in a journal entry, the money just keeps rolling in. I've had so many consults and inquiries, especially in a month that has historically been slow. Ain't no slow season for sunny spaces. Oh my gosh. You will see in a couple of weeks, Erica is going to be on the podcast and I'm going to have her tell all of the ways that she is crushing being basically giving us a masterclass in how to be a hapster, how to take all of the worksheets and the portal that I give you, all of the tools that I offer you guys that I don't always talk about on the podcast. We have lots of tools 
in this portal uh, that all hapsters get access to and lots of worksheets that you can use. Some people come in, they just come in for the coaching and they don't even use the worksheets and that's fine. They get plenty of results too. But Erica has given us a masterclass in the failure collection worksheet so much so that it's inspired me to approach it in a new way. All of us are taking notes. And basically we noticed that she's tracking to hit or exceed every single one of the goals that she set for herself this year, including her revenue goal, which she is over 7K above who re- her revenue goal right now. And she just wrote six figures and the year is not even over yet. Erica owns a professional organizing company called Sunny Spaces. And you can check her out on Instagram. And if you are in the DC area, uh, you must, must, must hire her. Her organization skills and her team does amazing work. So I'm so proud of you, Erica. And I can't wait for you guys to meet her on the podcast and learn from her in a couple of weeks. Okay. Next is Helen. Helen has just done what I ask all of my clients to do, but sometimes they drag their feet on doing, which is to do the math. Helen, when I was asking her about her impossible goal and how she was going to get there, she felt a little bit confused and a little bit overwhelmed because she has a lot of different offers. Now, I recommend simplifying down to one to maximum three offers, but I'm not going to force you to do anything that you don't want to do in your business. All I will make sure that you're doing is the math. So she took the offers that she had and she she broke down her annual goal and figured out the math of what she is selling selling and how many of each offer she needs to sell in order to hit her impossible goal. Immediately, it cleaned up all the drama and gave her no no need to just feel overwhelmed and sit in, I don't know what I'm selling, and then just kind of try and uh, unsuccessfully sell everything. She knows exactly what she's doing. So she's going to be forced to then instead sit in the discomfort and go right after it. And now she feels more uncomfortable, but she doesn't feel overwhelmed. It feels simple. There's a path and all she has to do right now is do it. Rock on Helen. Okay, next is Krista. Krista was in happening sessions in the March class and she took a round off for the September class and she just recommitted recommitted to be in the 2023 March class. After her coaching and after her round, last round, she spent it creating policies, setting boundaries, raising prices, figuring out what it was that she wants her future business to look like and now is committing to time management because she knows that in her season of the summer, um, she tends to get into a summer of hustle and she does not want this this summer to look like that. She has a son that she wants to spend more time with and she wants to still continue to serve her clients in a masterful way, but without losing the lifestyle that she really, really craves and desires. So this next round she has committed and she's already decided and she's coming in with like big energy right now, because once you sign up for happening sessions, even when you enroll, you get access to all of the worksheets to the portal and you get your workbook in advance. So even though the coaching doesn't start for a couple of months in March, she's already able to get a, some momentum and get the, start getting the results that she wants ahead of coaching, even starting. I love this for you, Krista. Okay. Next is Kate. Kate's actually one of my sneaky clients who's not an entrepreneur, but she has the brain of an entrepreneur. Kate is uh, a one of my one-on-one clients, and she is head of brand for a major global bank that we all know. She has been delegating like a boss since we started working together and recently just Uh, sent me a text message saying she feels so energized after our last call because she's really starting to connect and see herself become that future you. Kate, when we started to work together, was already pretty advanced. She's very bright. She is 
a part of a global team and is used to doing some high level work in an industry that is very fast paced where she's managing lots of money and lots, lots of people. So her brain already had to be pretty tight. So the work that we're doing is so advanced and she just soaks it up like a sponge. And she's been such a student of the work and the, the types of breakthroughs that we've been able to have on there are really, really high level and inspiring me for, I know I've teasered this, but soon coming will be happening sessions 2.0 for those of you who are scaling uh, from multiple six figures to maybe a million or that million dollar life, that million dollar lifestyle, that, um, that place where we're not just thinking about money, but we're also scaling to make sure our time and our energy is spent in a way that is so dialed. Way to go, Kate. Okay, next is Melissa. Melissa sent me a message this week saying, I had a breakthrough with scheduling this week. Melissa is already one of our resident rock stars in You Need a Budget. She in fact, is most likely going to be uh, someone that I lean on to teach an additional uh, workshop within happening sessions to help people who are still learning. You need a budget to set up their their budget for their business and their personal. She's done this so well that she really could work within happening sessions, which might be coming. But even though she's been doing scheduling for a long time, when we come in and out of phases of our life with new circumstances, um, Sometimes we tend to fall off. I am absolutely no exception to this. And I have been starting to get back into scheduling in a new way uh, since Mari has arrived into the world. And she was having the same thing where she was struggling for a couple of months to get back into her schedule. And she found what works for you. I always say that my scheduling process is not a one size fits all solution. It's a way of you asking yourself high quality questions to figure out the way that you need to think about time for you. And that means being results oriented. I want to make sure that however you're scheduling, it's a way that's going to get you the results that you want to create. And so she has decided to break down her scheduling hour instead of doing it once a week, like many of us, or every couple of days, like others of us, she is doing uh, scheduling her time one day at a time. And that is helping her to stay out of overwhelm. And she decided to put on her CEO hat and decide to use the parts of Hapster scheduling that works for her and then take her own brain to modify it in the way that is going to get her the best results. Melissa also came within a few thousand dollars of her impossible six-figure self-employed goal this year, and I couldn't be prouder. All income in her own business out of transitioning out of so many different kinds of photography freelance. Now she is all doing boudoir photography work. Amazing. Finally, the last shout out I have for you guys is Susan. Susan, this shout out is so near and dear to me because Susan is currently on her maternity leave and she, uh, she just welcomed her baby boy Jaden into the world and he is super, super little, even littler than Mari. And she, some obstacles after she set up her maternity leave, as we know, when the baby comes, then like, we don't know exactly what is going to happen. Some obstacles caused her to feel the need to go back to work early, but it didn't really sit right with her. And after some coaching and some self-coaching that got her out of scarcity and out of, you know, what can feel like overwhelm or a victim mindset for, for many of us, she created a plan to rewrap up and resume her three month maternity leave that she set out to take. This can be even harder sometimes you guys, when we set out to do something and then we've decided in our brain, it's not working. It's not working the way that we want it to work. And then we, we scrap the plan to go back without making it mean anything about ourselves, that is being masterful. Recently, I did a podcast episode on changing your mind and when it is productive and when we want to change our mind and that's going to be a time saver and when it's going to be a time suck. And in this case, she spent 
thoughtful time evaluating and decided to change her mind again and go back to her maternity leave that she time she will not get back with her son. And all of this is thanks to the time that she dedicated to coaching and self-coaching herself while she has a newborn at home and she's running a large staff and a law firm. Susan, I must also mention did all of this while hitting her multi six figure goal. And we're almost to the end of the year and she is already tracking exactly at it. In fact, I think she's over by $82 to in her multiple six figure goal while taking a three month maternity leave and pivoting multiple times and welcoming a baby, her first baby, I mind, mind you. I'm doing all this with my second baby. It is admittedly much easier. The first time around, I couldn't even imagine doing what she's doing. I'm so, so proud of you. I cannot wait to have this be a recurring episode and to shout you out. If you're listening and you're a future hapster, this is going to be you on the show that I'm shouting out. What are you waiting for? If you missed this last round of enrollment for happening sessions, do not wait to get yourself on my calendar so you can figure out what you can do to make sure you are in the next round. What you're going to do right now while you're listening is you're going to go to the link in my bio, in my Instagram, at what's happening, WJS, and you're going to click on schedule a free mini coaching session. This is a consult call. We'll talk. It's no strings attached. We're going to see where you're at, where your future self is, and where you want to go and how you're going to bridge that gap. What round of happening sessions you're going to commit to applying for, and we're going to get you to that future you. I am just overflowing with love for all of my current hapsters and I'm overflowing with love for you, my future hapsters. Me and future you and future me are besties. Just you wait. All right, you guys have the most gorgeous weekend and I'll see you next week. Hey, hapsters. If you want to learn more about today's topic, head over to what's happening.com forward slash podcast. That's what's happening, W-H-A-T-S-H-A-P-P-Y-N-I-N-G dot com forward slash podcast. If you're a business owner and you're resonating with what we talk about here, what are you even doing? Come hang out with me over where the party's at on Instagram at what's happening WJS. Again, that's happy, H-A-P-P-Y-N-I-N-G. And book a discovery call to see if coaching is your next best step.